what I want to do for the next few minutes is just kind of uh, give you an opportunity to compare and contrast uh, the different styles of houses, different coverings, different ways that, to operate these things. You know, it's variations on the theme, guys. There's so many different ways to build these, to operate them, um, and that's what's really cool about working with them. Seems like there's always a better way to make a better, well, improve, make a better bounce trap, I guess. So uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed doing is seeing somebody's idea and trying to improve it. Somebody takes one of my ideas, improves it, it's fine. You know, it's moving the whole industry forward. And that's what's cool. So that we have a more valid, marketable product and a technique and a technology that really works in the real world. You know, that's, that's the important thing. Okay, you notice we talked about yesterday a little bit about uh, Quonset versus um, what we would call a gothic style. Thank you very much. Mr. Hill will build both. Uh, this structure, these two on the on the uh, the north are what we would call more of a gothic style. They're more pointed, have an apex. They're preferred in the northern parts of the country and in and, and snowy climates because they shed snow easier. Uh, you could kind of see why, okay? And they also, it allows the heat to kind of move to the top and if you can exhaust it out that ridge, it's a very, very efficient way of getting rid of, of, of heat. And so this particular house has a, the um, a dura, dura wrap, what is it called? Solo wrap. Solo wrap. Sola, it's S-O-L-A wrap. Yes, it's made in Germany. It's that bubble wrap material. Some of you have seen it on the small house up here. And these, these materials are just standard six, uh, six mil, uh, four year greenhouse film. Some of them will have anti-condensate uh, act ingredients on them on the surface where they they help the uh, keep the, the the rain or the beads of water from falling they, they roll off to the side so it doesn't wet your crop some of them have uh, diffusing compounds in them that when the light hits it spreads that light and you don't see shadows in the house it keeps things from sun burning like we talked about yesterday but uh, you'll notice that every manufacturer has a little different technique uh, Steve uses a little different uh, door type than Leon does uh, they all use wiggle wire. A lot of it is, you know, most of it's similar, but everybody has a little different uh, 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 theme, you know, variation on a theme, if you will. Steve, you want to demonstrate how this, how you uh, vent this house? This is a drop-down curtain. Most people who make their own uh, will just use a roll-up, but this is a drop-down. How cool is that? Now, the, the advantage of this type of a vent is that you can have a curtain low, and when it's on a, if, if it's cold weather, uh, and yet it starts heating up, well, if it's windy and it's cold, you, you, uh, you drop that, and you're going to shelter, because it drops from the top, you're going to shelter the small plants in the house. Okay, so if you've got some serious wind, that'll protect them. Uh, you can do the same thing with a vent that rolls up from the bottom. The problem with that is, is that, uh, of course, if it rolls up the bottom, it, you expose the plants quicker. Uh, but you can put a curtain, just stationary curtain, and then come roll up from the top of the stationary curtain kind of thing. So there's, there's you know, again, variations on a the theme. Uh, it's a bilayer, um, and the bubble wrap make, gives it a really good insulative property. Where I see this, this film have an advantage is in houses where you want to provide a little heat. A lot of folks will do that early on to get things started or maybe in the fall to keep their, their tomatoes growing until it gets just so cold they can't afford the heat. This gives you uh, a little bit more um, efficient use of that heat that you put in or it could be used for a fully controlled greenhouse where you're going to go ahead and heat everything. Uh, I see it initially if, if for people who are not, are not on a hobby scale, you know, for people are looking at just, they want to have fun, they want to enjoy it, and they don't really care too much about the cost, or that's not their primary concern cost. I see this as a, being a really good uh, alternative for maybe a, uh, a Lexan or a polycarbonate, rigid plastic uh, alternative. So, uh, but we'll, like, we don't know. We're just kind of evaluating and see what happens. With these pockets, you know, in the wintertime, we can, we can seal this house up completely. Cause because it's all these houses like this have a pocket they have air air escapes we can take this seal this up from the inside and we can overwinter stuff a whole lot different than what you could before 
Uh, and then if you still need a minute, all you do is, is pop this down just a little bit. If you need to, if you need to give it just a few inches of air to let that heat out during the during the winter when it's warmed up. When like February, this past February was so hot or warm, it was uh, these houses got awful hot. So in those particular days, you could still vent this house very easily. But if it got cold, you could have it sealed up, turn the heater on, and your and your heat wouldn't escape. So. Just, just keep in mind, all this stuff comes with a price tag. It's up to you. But most folks, over time, opt for convenience. It's when they, especially if when they get really busy and their their business is a success, and they just need to spend more time growing and not so much time maintaining the house or opening it and closing it, and you know, just doing all the the grunt work stuff. Okay, let's let's move on up the hill. The ultimate um, venting scenario is to to utilize the the ridge along the top of the house where the, the, the heat naturally would, would, uh, would rise to, to vent. I mean, I mean that's, the, that's the perfect place, the most desirable place to vent. The only problem is it's hard to do that. It's hard to design a system where it's easy to maintain, easy to construct, uh, putting the plastic on it and, uh, and then, like I said, maintaining that plastic. So uh, we worked with Leon Sloan over the years and this, this little house that we were in with the irrigation he came up with this, this design. Uh, it's kind of a permanently vented structure. Uh, it's really it, it not ideal for winter, but I, initially we, we planned on putting some sliding panels on that so we could close it off um, and just use, open the panels and then that would be the vent. He didn't like it. I didn't think it really you know, was where we wanted to go. And so he kept working on the idea. And so eventually he just came up with a modular vent that we see on this over here, you could actually apply or actually um, insert or connect to an existing house. You'd have to cut the plastic and reattach it, but it's over here. And we'll walk, we'll walk into this house and see if we can uh, and open and close one of those vents now. It's pretty cool. They're not cheap, right? You buy them in 12 foot sections and he can give you the cost on that. But if you're looking at a way to vent your house, you could buy one of these from him, go ahead and then attach it to your existing frame and, uh, and start using it. Uh, he'll, he can show you how to do it. He could do it uh, for you, or you could just simply go and see how it works, how it's attached, and do it yourself as a, you know, a, an add-on. This house, you can see how these little vents uh, are attached. They just bolt on to the frame with these pipe hangers. They just, well, actually, they, you set them down, you cut the plastic, open it up, set these down, and then you use these pipe hangers right here to attach it. These are little screw openers. You attach your, your drill to this. Uh, you can have a, um, just a cordless drill. Attach it to this and you can reverse it or just put it on drill mode and uh, it will open and close these vents. All right. The, the issue here is maybe we need to, they rust, the water gets on them. Uh, when it's opened up, water blows on them and they rust a little bit. So you, you probably need to keep them, uh, uh, well you do it, would keep them oiled. But it's pretty quick. Now, if you do this, you, you can also do it by hand. It takes forever. So you put your drill on there, brrrr, no charge for the sound effects, and it'll close and open. This, this works. This is a, the real deal. Uh, is it the last uh, modification of, of a, you know, venting? No, there'll be something better. But it's something that you can buy and put on yourself, okay? And uh, he's selling quite a few of these. Uh, I don't know if Leon, I think I, he's down there. And we can ask him a little later on. He's going to be demonstrating his mo uh, mobile, movable hoop house. So something to think about. And the way this, the best way to, to utilize this, of course, is just to vent the sides. Just pop the sides open just a little bit to create a flue. And that hot air will naturally rise and it'll just keep that air going through the house. He would suggest that you only need a few of these on a house. Um, if you put too many of them, you don't get an, as much... Uh, uh, difference in temperature and, and air movement. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a physicist or an engineer, but uh, I do like them. Uh, and then if you buy a commercial model, you can buy a ridge vent, this type of thing, but they're very expensive. And again, the main thing is they're just a little hard to make, like all of them, hard to maintain. Getting up there and fixing that, repairing the plastic, it's a little tough. So um, we're not, you know, we're, has, have we evolved to the perfect hoop house? No stinking way. This thing is continually evolving. 
And we're trying to do it on the cheap so people can utilize this technology. But, uh, you know, that, that brings up other issues. You, you get what you pay for. That's just where we live in. Okay, now let's move over to the hobby houses. The first house we added, we, 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 uh, we actually installed was this little uh, one and three eighths inch top rail house. This was designed for a, a movable uh, education unit. We would take it apart, put it up together. We'd take it to uh, uh, classrooms, uh, 4-H, FFA, uh, whatever. Okay, they want to know, they, we want activity, an ag-related activity. We can load that up in the truck and take it somewhere, and then the students put it together. It's made from all chain link fence, fencing and uh, fittings. Okay, it's pretty much that. There's a few additions to it, but uh, in other words, you can just go to Lowe's, buy what you want. If there's some Home Depot people here, sorry I didn't mean to offend you, but uh, you just go to the box store, get what you want, need, and put it up. I don't have instructions on how to do that or any uh, 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 detailed uh, guide, but you can look at it and kind of tell how it's put together. It's not completely assembled yet. We're in the process of modifying that, taking it apart and fixing it and, and improving it. But it's pretty cool because here's the deal with that. You can use a pipe bender you can buy from Johnny Seed and bend your own pipe and bend it uniformly to where it'll make a nice, you know, uniform uh, arch. And uh, I think it's 12 foot wide house and you can make as many of those as you want, make it as long as you want. Ours is 16 foot long so we can, you know, <laughs> we can actually build it in a short amount of time. It does have a, a base frame on it and that's one thing that you'll have to have, uh, you'll have to custom do. Leon did that for us so we can, uh, we can anchor it real quick and take it apart and not have to pull the post out of the ground. All right? Um, so uh, let's, let's look at th this house here. This is a, a model or a kit that we bought from Fraber, or Fraber, <laughs> Harbor Freight. And it was one of their larger models. And I like the price, but I understood that we'll probably get what we paid for, and we did. It's a pretty house. But if you go up and lean on it and you shake it, you can see it's fairly flimsy. It's got the, the polycarbonate rigid panels, the little panels that fit in there. And, but if you look at the size of the metal, just little bitty stuff. It's very thin. A severe windstorm would take that out. And if you were to modify it some, now here's what you could do. Uh, if you had it in your backyard, if it was sheltered a little bit with a fence or some trees, a sh uh, shelter belt, I think that might work for you. But I would, I would probably put post in every corner. I would sink them in the ground and concrete them in, and then I would run angle around the top, and I would tie it into that frame, that little box frame that I make out of uh, steel pipe. And then I think it would really, it wouldn't take up any extra space, and it would really, I think it would work okay for you there. It'd solidify a little bit. All right, before we get to Steve's house, let me tell you a little bit about this thing. Remember we talked about poly pipe? Uh, this is a polypipe house that's been modified a little bit. And when I say a little bit, that polypipe is flexible. So if you use polypipe for the ends, it won't work at all. So we need some steel in this house. And so I've used the steel on the, the end walls. Probably should, in retrospect, gone back and instead of using one and a half, should have used two inch uh, steel square tubing. That way I wouldn't have to brace it. If you go on, on the inside, you can see how I've used braces on all the corners. That takes up a little room, but it was necessary. I just didn't want the thing to crate or implode on me before we actually had a field day. It's a fairly strong structure, and if the end walls stand up, the other, the other hoops are going to be fine, okay, because all, they're all tied together. Now, the way to vent this thing is a kind of a, I mean, I've seen this done before, but we've never done it here, so I thought I'd just try this. And if you'll bear with me, I'll open this up and show you how this, this vents. It's not for everybody. It's kind of a hassle. And we're going we're gonna to perfect this. Or if I can't perfect it, I'll just I'll change it out and redesign it. <laughs> That's OK. You know, I learn more from sometimes our mistakes, right, than our successes. Somebody bring me that. There you go. I'm not tall enough to get up on there and, op and open this thing up without a ladder. And that's the other default. You could use a stick, but this is, I guarantee this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect it right here, right? And then we're going to just slide it apart. It's poor man's, poor man's system. 
I think I about got it done now. Disconnect. Got it. Okay. There you go. It works. It's kind of a hassle, but it's kind of low tech and cheapo. Okay. This would probably not work on a large structure. Uh, the pipe would probably snake too much. It is all steel uh, pipe. You don't have to have pipe on the bottom to roll it up. I chose to do that so it would look a little better. You could just let the pipe, the, the plastic lay, hang down on the, uh, the frame, the base. But uh, if you want to increase the, the venting on the side, you can roll this up or just lift it up, okay? It's, it's nothing, it's nothing like you said, uh, really, it looks kind of ragged and it's not finished yet, but um, it's fairly, fairly inexpensive and I think pretty strong for what it is. So it just gives you another option. I've got designed to put containers in there. I doubt if we'll ever grow anything in these, but again, they're here for people to look at, get some ideas, go home and build a better mousetrap. You're free to do that. If you can come up with a better way to do this, let me know and we'll demonstrate it. If you want to take the plastic off, you just undo this and you take the plastic off real quick. It's not hooked on with anything but the little golf ball uh, bungee here. Again, it works really better on, a, on a more of a small scale hobby house than a commercial house because of just the forces involved with a lot of wind and a lot of wind load. But small houses, it, we've had good luck with, uh, with this kind of method of attaching. No wiggle wire to buy. Uh, I say no wiggle wire to attach the, the top. We use wiggle wire to attach the end plastic, the plastic on the end, the end walls, okay? All right, enough of that. This is Steve's house over here, and it's the same material, the uh, solar wrap. And this is a, uh, the hobby size. And here, you Steve, you talk more about it. Get the solar power and everything. It's just a 12 by 16 house. It is a, a hobby house, and we do have this hooked up. We can hook it up to a thermostat there. It's running now. It's still on, on solar. So it's, it's hot enough in there that we're trying to get the heat out. This is our, our maiden void, so there's some modifications that we can make over time that will improve that. Uh, thinking about putting some foundation vents at the bottom at, at one end, where there'll be some airflow coming in from cooler air, then cycle out. It, it's just, um, but we do want the sides closed. You know, in the summertime, we can put um, a stay cloth on it. Uh, wintertime, we should be able to put a little supplemental heat in it. Uh, I, think it I think we have a lot of, uh, a lot of promise for this, but uh, Steve's gonna let us know. He'll he'll test yeah. it. He'll measure and weigh it at all at all corners, and so that's why we wanted to be here for as well. 